Hey everybody, I'm back for another sketchbook practice. This time we're going to do fall leaves. I have picked, I went to the park and picked up several fall leaves. I have an oak leaf here. I believe this is a pin oak and this is a maples. So, and I've got one over here. They got kind of dried out. I'm not sure what this is. They kind of curled up, so I might have to go get a fresh one. So we'll do that another day. Or just go around in your house or in your local park and, and pick up some leaves. And what I did is I just traced this. And, you know, I, I traced this one, but I like the colors of this one better. So... And this has got some holes in it and some interesting qualities. So I am using my Strathmore Visual Journal. And I'm, today I'm using my Paul Rubens 12 set of paints. Let's make sure you can see that. And of course my water and my paper towel and I'm going to start off with my number 8 brush. I have my t number 10 and my number 4. And these are the Princeton Summit. So I'm kind of liking them because they they have a they hold a lot of water, but they have a good bit of snap to them. They're fairly new. Now I'm going to start off with a little mixing and I'm going to mix up some reds and I'm going to um, mix up some red over here, some red over here and I'm going to put some yellow ochre in it because I want to have some orangey tones. That looks good. Orangey peachy tones. I don't see any really bright oranges. Um, I might add a little bit of brown to this red just to tone it down. Let's see what this is. Let's add a little bit of this burnt sienna color. Just to tone it down a little bit. So we don't want it to be super bright. And then I'm going to mix up some greens. And yellow on its own. Yellow ochre. Let's get some yellow ochre out here. And might want to add just a little bit of brown to that too. Let's add some of this burnt umber to that just to mute it down a little bit. Don't see any bright yellows. And then let's get some brown out here on our palette. Because I am seeing that definite burnt umber and some greens. And I'm going to mix up this green. That is a, I believe that's a Payne's Gray. Yes. So, I could look at my color swatch. That would be helpful. So, I'm going to get some of this green. And we're going to change that color a little bit. I'm going to add some yellow ochre. Just make it a little bit more natural. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. Okay. So I have my colors mixed. And 
and so I am just going to get my brush real wet and I do have some green on here and I'm going to do wet on dry but I'm going to keep it really wet so I can kind of drop these other colors in with it and they'll they'll blend together on the paper and it's okay if they turn brown because that's what they're doing naturally anyway And get those edges while they're wet. And just kind of work its way out. I'm going to get some of this yellow. Maybe drop some right in here. Just keep it real wet and you won't have any hard edges. And after it dries, we'll go in and put some detail on it. Let's brighten that up a little bit. I'm really liking the colors of the fall. Drop some more red in here. Get some of this orange. And just let it mix on the paper. Oh, now I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to I think that green is just a little bit too bright. So I'm going to mute it down with some yellow. Okay, and I'm going to drop in some brown on its own. I'm seeing a lot of brown spots so I'm wanting it to be pretty dark and I'm just going to kind of put it here where it's starting to naturally blossom and maybe around the edges up here and just where I'm seeing some crinkles I'm liking that. I'm seeing some right here along the stem. Just wherever you think. Like I said, I traced this from the other leaf, but I like the colors of this one better. So. I'm seeing some particularly dark areas right in here. Hmm. I'm really enjoying this. Just tap, tap, tap. And if you think you got too much color in there just go and with it dry your brush off and pick up some with a thirsty brush gosh I'm enjoying this one so much I don't even know if I'm going to take a marker to it um I 
and find I find it hard to paint and talk at the same time. So if I go silent, now I'm going to mix a little bit of this green with this brown, and I'm going to go down on the stem. I'm going to let it touch the leaf, let it bleed, and see that's kind of a greenish brown. Yeah, okay, so we'll let this dry and we will come back and do some details because if I start dropping in any more, it's going to start pushing the paint and making funny cauliflowers and blossoms. So I'm liking the way this is looking now. So we'll stop the video and we'll be right back. Hey everybody. Okay, so I grabbed a different brush. This is called a rigger brush. It's got these long hairs and I'm going to use these to um, make the veining in the um, leaf which is all crinkled up now but um, you can fill this brush with paint and I'm going to use green maybe a little brown and it should stay you know with filled with paint for a good long while and I'm noticing that these veins are looking at the back of the leaf here they're coming up from the center of the stem and they're just going out from the center so I'm going to do that so I'm going to make the center one first and don't be afraid to turn your paper to the way it's most comfortable for you so I'm just going to come down and you can make a nice long line and then I'm gonna go out this way and go up I'm gonna turn my paper so it's more comfortable for me And I'm going to make it a little more watery. I thought that line kind of got thick. So I may work on that one. And then I'm going to go from here over to here. Okay. And then I'm going to take and just go out and make these veins And then I think we'll call it done. Oh, got too much there. If you get too much, you can tap on it and you can also take off some of the paint by or some of the water. That's better. There we go. Yeah, I think that line was too thick. So I'm going to take the moisture. Yep, see? It's just too thick. So I'll take some of that moisture off my brush. And you can kind of see it because it's shiny 
and then it kind of loses its sheen. And then just make some really thin lines for the veins. And I'm going to try to fix that other one. So I'm going to try to... Because I think that one's too dark. But I really like that coloring. Okay, so let's see what I can do to fix that dark line. So I'm going to take this Princeton Summit and uh, the number four, and it's got some stiffness to it. So, you know, it's got some springs, so it'll stand up to some abuse and I'm just going to thin that out a little bit and wipe my I kind of like that effect it's kind of having a lifting effect and just blending it out a little bit Wipe it off. There. I take it off just a little bit more on this side as well. Just blend it out. There. You could take a scrubber brush. You can get those like at Hobby Lobby or Amazon or Joann's. I'll try to remember to link below. So, alright. Now, if you wanted to take some marker, I kind of like it the way it is because there's hard edges, but you could take and just kind of pull the ends of it to give it some more definition. You don't have to go all the way around with the marker. Maybe just go around the points. Yeah, I like that. So there you have it. A fall leaf. This is a maple leaf. I really like it. I like that different shades of some or different shades of fall so that looks really good so thanks go out and get your leaf just like I said if, if the leaf is if the leaf is too not the color you like just take one that is the color you like or just create your own so Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I'd love to see your leaves. So let me know how you like. This is another page in our sketchbook. We're getting close. Talk to you later. Bye.